already present. We're going to go ahead and reverence him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, I mean, just listening to everybody and, and see how God is moving, there's one thing I know for sure. God will do it. Yes. Number one. Yes. Number two, people are hurt. Yes. People are hurting. Yes. And what God has given me for today, when he first gave it to me, I was like, I don't see how this is going to fit in, God. I don't see how it's going to work. Because the first thing God told me is, this message isn't for everybody. All right. This message isn't for those that are doing okay. They find life is hockey dory It's like flowers everywhere you go, everywhere you look. Everything is going great. This message is for those who it seems like tra it's trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma going on in your life. And it seems like nothing is worth working out. And it seems like you don't even have... You're not even standing on your last leg because the rug was ripped right up out from under you when you were on your last leg. All right. God told me, he said, this message is for those who are holding on, but it's like your fingers are about to break because you're holding on so tight. All right. Everything is, 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 it seems like it's going this way, going that way, and nothing seems like it's going the way it should go. So God told me two words. First of all, he said, I promised you you were going to win. Hallelujah. I promised you the victory. Yes, Lord. Yes. But it seems like everything that you're going through, you're getting hit on the left and you're getting hit on the right. The Lord said two words, when wounded. When wounded. You keep saying, God, I'm getting hurt here. I'm getting wounded here. I'm, God is saying, yes, I see you're wounded, but you still can win. Uh -huh. You still can win it. It's, it may seem like the life that you thought of and you envisioned for yourself. It seems like, God, you promised me this. You promised me that. God, you said I'd have this. You said I'd live abundantly. But then all this stuff is coming on. All this stuff is happening. And God wants us to know today his promise hasn't changed. He promised you the victory. He promised you that you're going to win in the end. Yeah, yeah. But if you have to win wounded, ah. win wounded. Ah. Just keep going. Yeah. Don't stop just because, God, I'm tired of this and I'm tired of that. Yeah. If you're tired, stop, take a rest, but don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up on it all. Yeah. And so I was like, Lord, how how can I fit this in? How can, how can, how can I make this work? And so... He took me in a different direction than I, I've ever been before. He said, I want you to look at these verses that everybody always talks about when they're trying to tell you, hey, be encouraged. Yes. So he took me to Jeremiah 29, 11. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you. Yes. This is the Lord's declaration. Yes. Plans for your well-being, not for a disaster. To give you a future in hope. So when I was reading that and I was like, but God, is this really what you had planned for me? Did you plan for me to go through this, this, and this? God, is that what you had for me, for me to, to, to succeed in life? I had to endure all of this. See, I know none of y'all don't think that way. But see, I was like, but God, how, how, can, I, how can I go through this and I still win in the end? And he said, it's easy. I commanded, I've already written the book. And I've already decided that you're going to win this thing. I never said how you were going to look when you want it. But I said you win it. I never said that you have this, this, and this, and this, and that when you, when you won. And at the end of the race. But I said you win the race. See, so many times we idealize how it would look, how it should look, how we want it to look, but that's not what God promised you. He said, I promised you the victory. I didn't tell you you would get it this way or that way. I said, you get it. It would be for your good and for my glory. But I never told you how it would look. I never said I would give it to you in a nice little box with a bow on top. Sometimes when you get the gift from God, it's just the gift itself. He's saying, here. Yeah. 
and walking away. He didn't say he'd make a big presentation. He didn't say, I, I, put, it, I, give, I put it in a nice box. I wrap it up for you. I put your name on it. He just said, I'll give it to you. Yeah. See, we, we have to realize God wants us to win even if we're wounded. He knew what we were going to go through. Yes. He knew what was going to happen to you. But he said, no matter what happens to you, as long as you hold on, I promise you the victory. But when you get that victory, it may not look the way you thought it should look. All right. But it be what God promised you. Yeah. Thank you. Then he took me to Isaiah 54, 17. And here I am still. Okay, God, this is, I, I'm used to seeing this. I'm used to hearing this. And um, it said, no weapon formed against you will succeed. And you will, and will, excuse me, and you will refute any accusation raised up against you in court. This is the heritage of the Lord's saints. And their vindication is from me. This is the Lord's declare. See, God said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He never said they wouldn't be formed. He never said they won't work. See, prosper means that it would succeed in what is intended to do. The weapon is intended to kill you. But see, here's what the Lord said. It won't kill you. He never said it won't hurt. He never said that it, it won't, it won't, it won't, uh, you won't feel the effects of it. See, sometimes we just we look at it and we're like, but God, you said it won't prosper, but it, it hurt me like I felt the I felt the wind of the weapon go past me. Yeah. And he said, Yes, that's all you felt was the wind. Yeah. You didn't get the full impact of it. That's right. See, it was meant to kill you, and if it would have killed you, you never would have got the victory that I promised you. But because I promised you the victory, I let it wound you and stay. And when you were wounded, that caused you to pray even more. It caused you to get closer to me even more. Somebody go to John 20, uh, verses 25 through 29 for me. Because, see, sometimes we, we think, you know, God, I'm wounded, so now I can't do your will. I'm wounded, so now I can't have the victory. I'm wounded, now I can't do this, I can't do that. And God is saying, yes, you can. Yeah. As long as you have breath in your body, you have a purpose. And you have to seek out that purpose and live for that purpose. Don't give up just because you got a little hurt here and you got a little hurt there. Somebody had it. Verse 25 through 29. It says, The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors began being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. So, did, let me give you a little background on that scripture, there, those verses there. See, all the disciples had seen Jesus after the resurrection. Right. And Thomas, had he wasn't there. He wasn't present, because he... The Lord, they had told Thomas, we going over here. But Thomas decided, I don't want to go over there right now. So Thomas missed the visitation. Somebody didn't get that. Thomas missed the visitation of the Lord. So Thomas, they were telling Thomas, Thomas, this is what happened. Jesus came, and we saw him, and we experienced him. And not only that, Thomas, but he had wounds from where he was hurt. Even though he raised, he died. He rose again. He yeah. still had wounds. Yeah. Thomas said, I don't believe it till I see it. See, yeah. some of us, we need to realize, if Ooh. Jesus still had wounds, and when he won, you going to have wounds when you win also. Yeah. 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 Quit saying, they don't hurt me, I give up. Yeah. Quit saying, that hurt my feelings, I'm going to stop. Yeah. You got to keep going. If 
Jesus did it, why can't you? You say, I want to be like you, Jesus. Make me like you. He said, I'm giving you the wounds, but in a different way. I want to show you that after you have been wounded, you can still have the victory. You can still win. But God, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just hurt. I can't. I can't do it. I'm gonna stay home from church today. I can't. I can't. I, I can't face nobody. I can't do this. I can't do that. But in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, it says, "Don't forget to assemble yourself Come on, among up. the saints." Why is that? Because the saints are relying on you, just like you're relying on them. Come on. The saints realize that I'm standing up. Because I'm leaning on you. Oh, you standing up because you're leaning on me. I don't have the room for you to go down. You don't have the room for me to go down. Because see, the weakest link in the chain in the chain will break the whole thing. Even though you're wounded. Even though you're hurting. I know you're in pain. I know it. I know you on your last. You, you're not even standing no more. You crawling. You on your knees. And God is saying, that's where I want you. On your knees. Praying to me. Relying on me. Yes, Lord. You don't have to, you don't have to always be on the, on the mountaintop. That's right. In order to see your victory. Thank you. Sometimes it takes you being in the valley low. When there's nobody around. And it's just you and the Lord. Uh, yeah. In order for you to be able to say, I can see it now, God. Uh, I see it. Uh, and then you get one of the brothers and sisters in Christ uh, to call you and say, I'm praying for you. Uh, the Lord, I put you on my heart. We've been praying yes. for you. Uh, mm. yes, Lord. And you say, I, Lord, they were praying when I couldn't even utter a uh, word. Uh, when I couldn't express to anybody what I was feeling, they were praying, God. I couldn't say that, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They might have thought I was thanking them for praying, but I was saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because I'm so wounded right now. I'm so vulnerable right now. God, but God is saying, yeah, you're wounded and you're vulnerable, but you're also a winner. You're a winner. As long as you don't give up. The word said it's not the race isn't given to the swift nor to the strong. But those that endure. That means, yes, yeah, stuff happens. You fall. You trip. You're not able to do it on your own anymore. And you're to the point where you're about to crawl across the finish line. Yes. And God is saying, if you got to crawl across the finish line, you crawl, baby. Because oh. you going to be a winner in this thing. Yes. You're going to win. Ah. Everything I promised you, you will have yes. as long as you stay in the race. Yes. It's not until you give up. Yes. It's not until you say, I'm, I'm done. Yes. It's yours. I don't care what the situation may look like. You will win as long as you stay in the race. That's right. There's no way to win a race that you never enter or you never finish. Yeah. We have to realize that God is saying, you can win. Yeah. You can win this thing. But even if you're wounded, just finish the race. Yeah. Just finish the race. Jesus. Oh, God. Tasha, you want to see what the, the word that God gave you manifested in real life. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to pray with a saint today and pray for them, stand up. If you're willing to pray for somebody and intercede for them today, stand up. What I want you to do, I want you to go to somebody who's not in your household. Go to somebody that's standing. Elder Joyce has her hand raised right here. Find somebody that you're willing to pray for. Just find someone. Just go to them. Don't start yet. Just go to them.
Y'all, we are entering into a place, keep that plan. We are entering into a place where we got to encourage ourselves as we're encouraging each other. Because the thing is, we're holding on to each other. When, we, when God creates a kingdom, he really, it is so that we rely on one another as we rely on him. So we got to keep each other prayed up. Even though you may be wounded, maybe you're going to win the war. As long as you don't give up. God hasn't said give up, so don't give up. God hasn't told you it's over, so don't believe it's over. Know that God has promised you the victory. Even though you may get hurt in the war, and you may get hurt in the battle, the victory is yours as long as you hold on. As long as you keep going. You don't have to listen to what everybody's saying. You don't have to look at what's going on. Be careful what you speak over yourself. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. So if you want victory, you speak victory. Even when you're praying in the car and you're talking to the Lord, speak it out loud. Speak it out loud. Because the word is already there. The angels are already there. They're just looking for you to say the word. They're looking for you to command them. Lord, I'm hurt, but I'm still going to go forward. Lord, I'm hurt, but I'm still going to hold on. Lord, I'm, I'm wounded, God. But I know that you got a plan. It may hurt right now. The process may hurt, God. But I believe and I know that the victory is mine. Amen.